Hi, welcome. If it is your first time of stopping by or coming across my YouTube channel, you are highly welcome. I appreciate each and every one of you who always tune back to watch my program. May God Almighty bless you. You are free to leave your comment constructively. Like you know, I present to you information across the globe, especially Nigerian to be precise. And today, I present to you another exciting video which we are going to watch together now let's watch this video together then come to my comment section and tell me what you think about the video you are free to criticize but constructively as we watch the video together understand that the sarikin whatever sarikin fulani of lagos went to see the u.s ambassador to nigeria in lagos a few days ago and according to the message or should i say information coming out of the u.s mission they said is to foster cohabitation and unity that diversity is strength and i want to lay that particular nonsensical narrative to bed tonight before i continue any further anybody telling you about strength and diversity that person is a liar and a deceiver and the u.s ambassador is a liar and a deceiver one thing they don't teach we africans is this no country exists on a foundation of multiculturalism, there is no, nowhere in the world. Listen to me very carefully. All this nonsense, even the, the, the crap that Coca was coming up with, telling you about diversity is our strength and all that rubbish. Allow me to repeat, there is no country on this earth that survives on a foundation or a bedrock of multiculturalism, it doesn't exist. That is why multiculturalism in Africa is dead on arrival. It can never work. Because we are tribal beasts by nature. We are tribal by nature. That is why we travel from wherever we are during New Year's, during Christmas, during Easter, during New Year Festival to go back home where we come from. Because that is where we identify with. Now, let me ask the U.S. Ambassador a very simple question. Is United States of America a multicultural society? U.S. that was created and built by Western Europeans. U.S. was created, should I say, created by God, of course, built by Western Europeans, mostly English people that was fed up with the way of life of the English monarchy. They went to America on Mary Rose. I want to ask the U.S. ambassador, I want to teach Africans what they don't know this evening. There is no country that functions on this multi-ethnic rubbish. It, nowhere in the world not even the usa that was created by people who are not indigenous to america the owners of the soil of america are native american indians that is a fact of life god gave america to western europe to develop and gave them a special grace to be the beacon and the light and the conscience of the world because god knew that if he had left all these wonderful people in europe they would become contaminated he removed them from Europe, sent them to America, built a wonderful nation as a shining light and a beacon for the whole world to look up to. Even that America that was built from scratch by people who are not indigenous to the land is not multicultural. Why am I saying this? America was founded on the principles of Judeo-Christian, Greco-Roman, democratic value systems i repeat america is not multicultural they accommodate other races and other nations yes they can accommodate you but where you're coming into the bedrock the foundation of america is based on judeo-christian principles greco-roman political ideology which is republicanism america is not multicultural America is Western Europe. The value systems of Western Europe, Judeo-Christian, Greco-Roman Republican governance. Had America been a multicultural society, they would have space for Sharia. I'm now addressing the US ambassador to try to tell them to stop deceiving people. We are educated, we went to school for a reason. We are enlightened and we have our brain intact. There is no country on this earth that runs on this wishy-washy multiculturalism, it doesn't happen. What you have are established order and value systems 
upon which various cultures can now coexist. If you go to America, you coexist under the provisions of the United States Constitution. And the U.S. Constitution is a Christian Constitution, not Islam. America is not multicultural. But under that bedrock of liberty and egalitarianism, you allow other cultures to come in. But first of all, they must swear allegiance to the or take an oath to uphold the constitution of the USA. That is something that the US ambassador never told the ginger with that went to visit her. The same way that Nigeria cannot function as a viable entity. Willis Shrinker knows what I'm talking about. I'm even sure somebody who claims he's learned, as, as Bishop Coker is, understands what I'm talking about. No country on this earth. The value system of the state of Israel is based on Judaic principles. The value system of Russia is entirely theirs. It's based on theirs. It's a Russian way of doing things from time, from times of the Tsar. If you go to Saudi Arabia, it is essentially a Sharia Islamic state. You can live there, no no problem. You can build your churches if you want. I think they have not started to allow churches to be built. But it is never, never a multicultural society. Japan is not a multicultural society. China is not. They can accommodate you. But that doesn't mean they are multicultural. This is type of nonsense they feed Africans. And we fall for that very gimmick of multiculturalism. At the end of the day, you end up with a useless contraption like Nigeria. You don't have any value system that anybody anywhere can define. If I talk about the USA, I can talk about hamburger in the USA. We can talk about what else do they have in the USA? Hamburger, you can talk about, um, what's it called? What are the traditional dishes? Um, apple pie and all the rest of it. You can say that these are American dishes. If you go to the UK, you can talk about maybe mashed potato and bangers and mash, which is sausage and mashed potato as their national meal. That's understandable. But I ask you, if you come to Nigeria, what is the national dish of Nigeria? Does a Fulani Janja with eat a Fegusi, where we come from? Does an Igbo man eat a weed soup? The answer is no. So on what basis is all this so-called multicultural foundation going to be laid upon? On what? We are not one people. We may be black, we may be Africans, but we're not one people. Not even one religion. If Britain cannot stay in an EU that is entirely Christian, EU is entirely Christian. Britain left. Nigeria, you don't know if Nigeria is Christian or in fact is Islamic. So for me to accept the multiculturalism being preached by the U.S. ambassador, I have to embrace Islam as my religion. That's what it means. And some of you get taken in by all this rubbish. And I feel sorry for you. Yeah, sometimes when I say they say I'm being very arrogant. If you're educated, you will understand that no nation is multicultural. They allow other cultures to come in. It doesn't mean they're multicultural. They have a viable space where multicultural ideas or identities can thrive. But the foundation has to be monolithic. It has to be one dominant value system and ideology. That's how it is all over the world. Don't let anybody fool you otherwise. That is the same reason why you have this, this, this anomaly. In a so-called so republic, you have royal fathers in a republic. Because you are trying to shuffle multiculturalism. You are trying to marry the feudal system of the North, the monarchical system of the West, and the Republican um, um, system in the East. To marry them into one. And what you have is entirely rubbish. And that is why Nigeria can never work. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. Competing value systems. Nobody wants their own value system to be subsumed under another person's value system. This is something that the U.S. ambassador never told you. But here I am telling you today. Because if you come here, you become educated. If you come here, you become enlightened. If you come here, you stop being a zoo animal, you become a human being. That is why we are the largest and, of course, the most consistent broadcasting platform insofar as Africa is concerned, right across the world. Millions listen to us because they know we preach the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. That is why this very day, because you are in one Nigeria, in multiculturalism, the army will come to Olo to defend Fulani Janja with living in our forests. We went to Olo to defend our people. They came, they arrested the clerics. Men of God, they arrested all of them. 
How many times have you heard that imams were being arrested in the north? Or that villages were being invaded in the north and imams being arrested? Only in Biafra land. And this is your multiculturalism. This is a place where you want all of us to stay somehow to pretend that all is well when we know that it is not. In that same Nigeria is where Fulani headsmen openly boast about conquest. Benue State is one. That is why I feel sorry for the idiots talking rubbish from Benue. They came and they made the same bold claim on Edo State. And I quote, we will kill all policemen and take over Edo State. Vanguard publication of January 23, 2021, this year. Only two months ago. Nothing happened to them. Only the Fulanese can lay claim to land that doesn't belong to them and nobody will say anything. When you, when you try to respond, they come against you. And your average foolish Nigerian who cannot reason properly, you know, they're not educated very well, I'm sorry to say, will side with the oppressor. It's only in Nigeria where the victim becomes the accused. You came into all, hope was other tried to give you land in all, to build a Fulani settlement. And we said no to it. That's all. To talk about all crisis. And now they're trying to blame IPAB, they're trying to blame Eastern Security Network. But all of you are aware of the fact that Nigeria Army and Nigeria Police are essentially Fulani Janja with terrorists in uniform. The newspapers, all the articles, everywhere, the political, the, the national discourse is replete with instances of Fulani being supplied by the military, as I'm going to, as you're going to listen to later on. But nothing happens when you try to fight back, you become the victim. And we are saying we are fed up of being victims. We can no longer be victims anymore. If you kill us, we'll kill you. I'm saying it live on video, so you can share the video all over the world if you want. If you come to our land to kill us, we'll kill you. As simple as that. It may take us some time, but eventually we'll overwhelm you. Well, in the end, we always win. As I warned them in Benue, we are in Benue. In all of our countries in Benue State, and we're not living there. Until we are certain that the lives and properties of our people there are firmly secured. Any day we learn to stop blaming the victims, this world will be a better place. I'm directing this very um, um, statement to the U.S. Ambassador, to the U.K. High Commissioner, to the EU presence in the, in, the, in the zoo and the UN as well. I know all of you will do nothing. We are not Muslims, so you're not going to help us. That, that's obvious. We know that for sure. But we have something that you do not have. We have the grace, the might, and protection of God Almighty in heaven. And we know that God exists. And as long as he liveth, as my name is in Namde, my Redeemer liveth, as long as God lives in heaven, all of you can never triumph against us. Ujuku said it before, and you said he failed. We know why he failed, because God said the time wasn't right. I want to show them, my children, what is called Biafra, that very kingdom. They have to fight their way into it. If that is the option you leave for us, then by all means, we'll oblige you. But Biafra must come, or we all die. It's as simple as that. There's no alternative. People must understand the rage that is boiling within us. You must understand how angry we are. We may look normal to you, but we are very, very angry, believe you me. And by the time we are done with Nigeria, the name won't exist. That I can assure you. You people are now beginning to see the type of madness that we are capable of unleashing. And more is coming. And I do not hide it because you hate us anyway. This conspiracy against Biafra for no reason we've done nothing wrong to anyone. But you despise us and you hate us. You want us to die because God gave us oil and gas. You want to take over our land. It's not going to happen. And we're not apologizing nor begging anybody to please uh, read this letter. They are raping our women. They raped our women. Did you do anything about it? They went to the UK High Commissioner. They were telling them, oh, we can't do anything about it. R rape victims. But you're doing something about defending Fulani. You are defending Fulani. But rape victims in front of you cannot defend them. And you're neutral. And you want Nigeria to continue. So you want me to stay in a Nigeria where my women will be raped every day. Nobody will do anything about it. And I'll be clapping for you. One Nigeria, I'll be clapping for you. Check it up, Mad people everywhere. People are insane. 
You want me to stay in a country where the Fulani police and soldiers can come and take our women, rape them anyhow they like, even before they release them, the charger, do you know how much we have spent? We have spent nearly 9 million naira to secure the release of people who were abducted and raped. Victims of state crime. Britain didn't say anything. UN never uttered a word. EU, nothing. US, nothing. And you want me to be in that country? I think some people are mad. Very, very insane indeed. If you do not believe in what we are doing, then you better get out. We're not going to stop. God knows we can never stop until Biafra is restored. We are peace-loving people. We abhor death and killing of another soul. It's in our nature, that's how we are. But because of that, they have been calling, coming and killing us all these years. We've kept quiet. They've been killing and killing and killing quiet. We have a case at the ICC. We have a case at Africa Union. We have a case of, um, what else again? In, in, in um, pending before, before the UN in New York. We've been to Geneva to tender our case. Before UN, till today, nothing. In fact, the more we complain to them, the more they come to abduct and rape our children, the more they come to kill us, the more they want to take over our land and our forest. And who told them that's going to be possible in our time? In a time, in a movement that I lead, you think you can come into our land and take it over? <laughs> oh dear. That means you don't know who we are. 30 pastors arrested for doing nothing. Have you heard about any imams being arrested in the north? No. Do you want me to stay in one Nigeria with you? After this level of injustice? Is that what you think? No, it is not going to happen. Not now, not tomorrow. There are two things plaguing them in the zoo. Lies and deceit. If not for the coming of IPOB, of Radio Biafra, all of you would have lived and died in the ignorance that Ojuku caused a war. That's what they were writing. Britain helped them to write it. Ojuku was a rebel, a secessionist, because we had no media. That is why they're paying Facebook billions upon billions of US dollars to stop this truth from coming out. Did Ojuku cause any war? Go on is alive, go and ask him. Did Ojuku cause any war? Ojuku went and negotiated restructuring with you. In Aburi. You came back. Britain told you not to agree. Because Britain realized that all the component units of... Britain knows that if you go back to regionalism, you have economic growth. The country will do very well. But Britain doesn't want it. That was why they even instigated the Nzogu coup, so-called Nzogu coup, saying they would bring Awolo to become the head of state. They knew what was going to happen. They wanted to truncate the economic miracle of Dr. Michael Hello, But what I'm telling you are fast. Go and investigate for yourself. In the East, you had the fastest growing economy in the whole world, over 40% every year. In the West, Awolo was performing his own miracle as well. Even in the North, Ahmad Bela and Tafabale were doing very well. You had all those massive industries in the north. You even had alamajiris that were employed in the north. Meaningfully employed, gainfully employed. They were all doing very well. Britain said, no, for us to control these people, we need to impoverish them. Let us introduce this war. There was a coup by Nzogu. And after that, there was the massacre of, as usual, massacre of our people in the north. Ujuku said, I have to secure my land and my people. They said, no, let's go to Aburi to discuss it. Ujuku went to Aburi and agreed, restructuring. That's something now you're asking for, to tell you how foolish Nigerians are. They're very foolish. That same nonsense you're asking for now was discussed many years ago. Ujuku sat down in Aburi with Gowon and decided that regionalism was the best way forward, restructuring, going back to who you were, 1963 constitution, 1960-1963 constitution. Be on your own and pay tax to the central government, as they have in America, as they have even in Britain. Britain, you have Scotland that is almost independent, Wales, the same thing, everybody is free, but Britain doesn't want the something they're enjoying to happen in Nigeria. Why? Ask yourself that question. 
Anybody telling you about one Nigeria is your enemy? I prove it to you now. Ujuku negotiated devolution, regionalism. The North will be on their own, the West on their own, even Middle Belt on their own, sorry, Midwest on their own, and then the East on their own. It's the same one Nigeria. On, on their way to the airport, before they boarded the aircraft, a call came from Lagos, from the British High Commissioner in Lagos, to go on, telling go on not to agree. After having signed the agreement, that same go on you're looking at today, God kept me alive so that he can witness the destruction he will bring upon that very zoo called Nigeria. Go on said no. Do you know all the journalists in Nigeria, none of them have ever gone to has ever gone to go on to ask him, why did he say no to Aburi? Aburi was restructuring. None of those agitating for restructuring right now has ever gone to go on or gone to Nigeria to say that Ujuku negotiated restructuring. What happened? They came back and they said, no. Ujuku said, okay, so you want to continue to kill my people all over the place? No. Because of that, I'll declare Biafra. Today, they have brainwashed all of you with the perverse notion and thinking that somehow Ujuku is responsible for causing a war when opposite is the case. If not now, that after many years of hammering on this very topic, it has now sunk into the skull of the people. That go on was the aggressor, not you. That's how Nigeria is. Always blaming the victim. And we lost over 5 million people during that very genocidal war. They killed over 5 million Biafrans. They wanted to wipe us away from the face of this very earth. But we survived it. And we are here today. Those they gave birth to, they have come. And this time with a wrath that you cannot even begin to imagine. And Biafra must come. Hi, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time or first day of coming across my YouTube channel or seeing my face, you are highly welcome. Please be comment to my next channel. My name is Linda Chukwezi. It comes a 